Hi, and welcome to the Get Started Fast with Avid Pro Tools S6 video series. My name is Gil Gowing, Pro Audio Solutions Specialist for Avid. In this video, I'll be taking you through the different S6 channel strip modules and how they operate. The first thing we should look at is what modules are available and how they are connected to the system. There are three different types of surface modules, the fader module, the process module, and the knob module. Each surface module has its own processor that allows for the modular connectivity. Each module also has a power connection that connects it to the 12 volt power supply per each frame chassis and a gigabit ethernet connector that connects the module to a switch that is usually housed in the frame chassis for the master module. For more information on the connection of the system, please see the S6 installation guide document. Okay, let's first look at the fader module. Each fader module has eight touch sensitive 100 millimeter TKD faders with two 32 segment LED meters that follow the resolution and ballistics of the host software. New to version 1.2 software, there is also a 10 segment green LED meter that shows gain reduction of a particular channel depending on host software. Above the fader are high resolution OLED displays that show not only track name, but track number, input, and record mode indicators, as well as automation modes. Right below the OLED are switches that enable record or input for that channel. Below the fader are backlit, multicolored switches. Not only are these switches modifier keys for the DAW, but they also display the track color from the host software. By color coding your different track types, this makes it very easy to see what track types are currently on the surface without having to interrogate the name of the track closely which would take your focus away from the process at hand. When a dialog box is on the screen, the switches for escape and enter will flash green on the currently attention workstation or amber on a non-attention workstation. There are also other switches for changing automation modes and attentioning tracks to the master module, which we will go over in later videos. The next module is the process module. This module lets the user select what particular process is on the knob module from setting inputs and outputs, to selecting and controlling inserts, sends, EQ, dynamics, etc. Each process module also has a row of colored, backlit, touch-sensitive knobs with a high-resolution OLED display that default to pan. These knobs can also freely be assigned to any process available by pressing the back switch under the knob and selecting a process. Once a process has been selected, you can then select a particular parameter by using the left-right arrows to scroll through the available parameters for that process. Several of the process switches also have a secondary function if pressed and held for greater than one and a half seconds. For Pro Tools, pressing and holding input will switch to instrument track parameters, and pressing and holding inserts will switch to heat controls. By default, each channel can be switched independent of one another. If you'd like to switch all channels on the surface to a particular process, you can use the All switch on the Master Module. This allows you to switch the entire surface to a particular view, inserts, sends, EQ, dynamics, etc. The Knob Module is the next module we will look at. Each Knob Module has four rows by eight columns of touch-sensitive, colored backlit knobs for a total of 32 knobs per module. On M40 systems, Two knob modules can be used per frame chassis for a total of 64 knobs. As with the process module, each knob also has a high resolution OLED display that will show parameter name, value, and graphic positional information. The color coding of the knobs is also important. Each process has a different color that it represents on the knob. Blue is for pan, red is for input, turquoise for inserts, magenta for EQ, green for dynamics, light yellow for sends, gold for bus outputs, and orange for groups. This makes it easy to see at a glance what process is currently up on each channel of the knob or process module. With the version 1.2 software update, automation mode indicators are now functioning next to each knob, making it easy to see the automation status of each parameter at a glance. Also, the encoders have acceleration built in so that when a knob is turned fast, it travels from one end of the spectrum to the other quickly. If turned slower, it moves with much more precision and detail. 
When viewing inputs, bus outputs, or groups, you can make assignments to them from the surface. With inputs, select input from the process module and press the input knob top to enter assign mode. You will need to page over to get to the input on a five knob system. From here, press the knob top of the type of input to be assigned, no input, interface, or bus. Once down into that menu, you can press the knob top to select an input. Press the back switch twice to get back to the top level. If there is a remote mic preamp assigned to an input, you will also get the mic preamp parameters on the knob module as well. When switching to groups, you're in assign mode by default. All created groups are shown. Press the end switch or the knob top to add or remove a track from a group. Pressing the select switch next to the encoder will make that group inactive or suspended. To assign an output or bus, select bus from the process module and press the output knob top to enter assign mode. From here, you can select what type of output you want to assign, no output, interface, or bus. Assigning outputs from the surface is additive, so if there is already a bus assigned, you will need to first assign no output by using the end switch on that encoder. Now, you can page to find the output you want to assign. Subpaths are accessed by pressing the knob top of the main path. Press the end switch of the encoder to select the output to be assigned. You can assign multiple outputs by pressing the end switch of other outputs to be assigned. You can deselect an output by pressing the end switch again. With the surface being modular, you can swap the position of the process and the knob modules. We have found this configuration makes it easy to edit parameters quickly on the knob module and is especially useful in five knob systems. So that is the basics of the surface modules and how to navigate around a channel strip. Each of the module types is easy to use and has great amounts of control and visual feedback. Thanks for watching and let S6 inspire your creativity.